Hi, as I promised in this video, I will take you through the process of car rendering demo which I posted earlier. Before we continue, I want to tell you that this video is little longer than my usual videos. That's why I have divided this video in different parts. So if you want to watch a specific part, then you can watch that from the quick link in the description. All right, let's begin. I have opened up the demo project. As you can see, I have divided the scene hierarchy in different parts, which we will explore throughout this video. Basically, it's a very simple setup, just a car model with materials from measured material library. For the reflections, I have used a HDRI setup. I have also used some spotlights to lit the scene and apply some post process effect to improve the visual quality of the scene. For the animation, I have used Cinemachine virtual cameras and Unity timeline to combine all the animations into a single clip. I have also used this controller script to change the car and rim material during the runtime. I hope you already seen the video. And finally, I have some volumetric lights, which I will show you in the later part of this video. So let's go through all these features one by one. And in the last, we will make a small car demo like this from the scratch to give you a better idea. Let's first talk about the modeling part of this project. For the car, I have downloaded this model from 3dsky.org. It's a very high polygon model with proper details and it's completely free. It's available in 3ds Max and OBJ file format. So if you use Blender or any other 3D software, then you can use the OBJ file format to optimize the mesh before importing in Unity, or you can directly import the OBJ file in Unity. Both ways are fine. However, if you want to achieve best quality result in your renders, then I would suggest you to first import this file in your 3D modeling software and unwrap the complete model without any UV overlapping and also generate light map UVs. Why? If you look at this blog post on Unity's official website, I guess you have already seen this video. In this post, they have talked about this car rendering demo made by Light and Shadows Studio. You can clearly see that this video has extremely high quality. I have also used this video as a reference, but I couldn't achieve this level of realism because I didn't spend a lot of time on this project as my main aim was to show you the materials of this new library, not the car model itself. Anyway. What they have done in this project that first they have unwrapped the complete model to get the best quality light maps. Here you can see the result with or without light maps. By using these light maps, you can clearly see a huge quality difference, not only in the interior, but also in the exterior part of the car. You can see the reflections are much more natural by using the light maps. Let's go back to unity. If I drop this model in the scene and turn the wireframe mode on, you can see now there are two high poly model in the scene but still you can use your viewport very smoothly. Unity does a great job in handling heavy polygon objects. For the room, I have used a simple box and detached the floor and walls. On the walls is a basic gray material and on the floor, I have used a checkerboard texture. I have also made this ring to hide the corner of the room, which is also adding a nice visual interest after applying a white glowing material. For the render pipeline, as you have guessed it, I have used high definition render pipeline. If I go to project setting graphics, you can see this HDRP asset and all the setting of it. Inside this pipeline, you can use this scene setting. You can create this by right click rendering and scene setting. In the scene setting, I have changed the sky type to HDRI sky and in this HDRI sky component, which you can add from this component override button. I'm using a HDRI from HDRI heaven website. Actually, I have tried a few other HDRI, but ended up using this launch interior HDRI because it suited the best for this scene. However, it's slightly modified from the original HDRI. Here is the original HDRI with some bright windows in it. I just opened the HDRI in Photoshop and use clone stamp tool to cover the window area. You can see that after fixing the HDRI, it's now giving much more believable reflection on the car. Okay, and this volumetric fog and volumetric light component, I will cover this in the later part of this video with volume lights. I have also used this reflection probe to bake the reflections. Now you must be thinking that why do we need this reflection probe while we can get reflection from the HDRI environment? Well, there are two main reasons for that. Let's zoom in on the side mirror. You can see that the reflection in the mirror is kind of pixelated and very low in quality. Even though if I use 4K size HDRI, the reflections are still not better. But notice when I enable the reflection probe, the reflections are now much better in quality. You can further increase the reflection quality by going HDRP assets 
reflections and increase this cube map reflection resolution to a higher value. But I strongly suggest that only increase if it is necessary for your project. As you can see, it reserves quite a lot of space in your memory. The second reason for using reflection probe is that you can see this floor object in the reflection, which is not visible in the HDRI environment. You can see from this angle the reflections are much more natural as it's showing the floor in the car reflections. One thing you will notice that the dark walls of this room are not visible in the reflection probe. To hide the walls, in the capture setting I have reduced the far clip plane value to 10, which means it will only capture the object within the 10 meter radius from the position of this reflection probe. For example, if I increase the value to 100 and bake the reflections again, now we can clearly see the dark walls in the reflection. But now the car is looking very flat, which we don't want. So I change back to 10 and bake the reflections again and make sure that your environment or background is set to reflection probe static. Otherwise they will not be captured in your reflection probe. Of course, you can also hide the walls in reflection probe by not setting it reflection probe static. You can use whichever method is appropriate for your scene situation. You can also use real time reflections, but they are very costly for the GPU. And for this particular scene, I'm having a strange issue that after some time, the real time reflections becomes dark. I don't know why this is happening, but if you guys have any idea about it, please let me know in the comment section. Okay. I change back to baked reflection, which are fine for this project. So that's it for the render pipeline. Let's move to the main topic of this video, which is materials. All right. For most of the objects, I have used materials directly from the library without any modification except this card material. For the card material, I have used a copy of this dark blue material and changed some of these parameters like paint color and coat tint to get a different color for the car. These parameters are pretty straightforward. Just move the slider to see their effect on the car. You can also try other materials if you want and they will work just fine without any tweaking because these are measured materials, which means they are physically accurate for every light situation. You can see that this red material is also looking great on this car. For the tires, I have used the rubber material. For the rims, I have used this metal scratched material. Actually, there are different types of metal materials for you to choose. If you look closely on this rim object, then you will notice that this material also have a scratch texture in it, which gives it a perfectly natural look. This carbon fiber material is also directly from the library. I didn't change any parameters of it. But since this material is using textures, so make sure that your object have a basic UVW mapping applied on it. Otherwise, your material will look stretched like this because this part was not properly unwrapped in the 3D modeling software. And the same thing for the materials with a scratch texture on it, which I just showed you. For the headlights, I have used metal material for the outer part. And for the main light, there are four different types of materials. The glass material is used for the front part of the light. The chrome setting used for the outer part. The mirror material is for this object behind this white light bulb. And for the light bulb, I have used a standard lit material with white color in both base and in the emission map. And finally, I use bloom in the post processing to make the lights glow. Let's take a look at this grill material. It's a standard lit material. In this base map, I have used a grill texture with alpha, which you can see here. And in this material, you can turn on alpha clipping and increase this threshold to cut off the transparent part of the texture. But I didn't use it because there is nothing behind the grills and it was looking quite hollow. I have also made this normal map in the materialized software. If you don't know about it, I have made a separate video on it. I will add a link in the description for this video. This normal map is very simple, but adds a nice step in your material. I have also increased the metallic and smoothness to get a specularity on the grills. For the windshield and side mirror, you can find glass and mirror material in the library. Let's quickly have a look at the interior part of the car. I didn't finish the material setup for this interior because I was not happy with the modeling. However, you can see the leather material applied on the seat and this plastic material on the dashboard, which is again looking very realistic. Okay, so that's it for the material setup. Let's have a quick look at the lighting setup of this scene. For this demo, I have used a very simple setup with few spotlights. But first, let me show you how the scene looks like without lighting. Now the car is looking very dull, even if it's not very bad because we still have our reflections turned on. So let's also disable all the reflections. And now our car scene is completely black except for the headlights and this ring because these have self illuminated material on it. 
If I turn on the lights, you can see that our car now has just a flat color, which is a mixture of this paint and this coat tint color. Okay, let's bring back the reflections and look at the lights. So there are four spotlights which I have placed around the car to let the complete car body. All these lights are real time lights and using the default light layer. I will explain this light layer feature in a minute. The intensity for all the lights is set to 500 lumens and range is 50 units or 50 meters you can say, which is more than we need but let's keep it for now. I have also enabled this reflector option which basically keeps the light intensity constant inside this cone shape. Also notice that all the lights are diffuse only lights because I have disabled the effect specular option for all the lights. If I turn on a specular you can see the car is completely blown up. So I keep them off because we are getting specular highlights from the HDRI, which is in this case much better than specular highlights. All the lights are casting shadows and I set the resolution to 2048 to get a better quality shadows. You can increase if you want more sharp shadows, but keep in mind that these shadow maps are stored in memory. So the higher the shadow map, the more space in memory it will occupy. I don't know if you have noticed yet that even though we have four spotlights in our scene, but on this floor plane we can see only single shadows, which is again not from the spotlight but from this extra point light. So what's the magic behind it? First let's have a look at this point light. This point light is also a real time light with 300 lumen intensity and 50 meter radius. And it's also casting shadows which you can see on this floor plane. So what I have done in this light that in the light layer I have also included this light layer too which simply means that this will affect all the objects assigned in both default light layer and light layer 2. You can include maximum 8 layers for a single light. Then for this floor object in the rendering layer mask, I have switched the light layer from default to light layer 2. That's why it's not receiving lights and shadows from the spotlights because they all are assigned in the default light layer. It's a very useful feature if you want to link a specific light to a specific object. For example, you can create nice rim light effect on your character without affecting the environment objects. You can also find this feature in most of the 3D modeling software. I also want to show you a bug in the lights that if I try to select all the lights then my floor has become more bright because now all the spotlights are automatically included in this light layer too. So if anybody from Unity watching this please fix it. So let's again remove all the spotlights from light layer 2 and now we are back to normal. One more thing I want to tell you about the lighting setup that I have baked a real time global illumination map only for the environment. If I turn on and off you can clearly see some bounce light in the shadow area, which is again very simple. First set the background object to light map static, then in the lighting panel set the indirect resolution to 2 and choose a default medium preset because it's a very simple scene and just click on this generate lighting button. And there you go. So that's it for the lighting, let's move to our next topic which is post processing. The post processing part is pretty simple as I have already covered this process many times before in my other videos. To add post processing effect, go to your main camera and add a post process layer and set the layer to post processing and change the anti-aliasing mode to temporal anti-aliasing and also change the camera layer to post processing to enable the post processing volume. Next I have this empty game object and its layer is also set to post processing. And here I have attached a post process volume in global mode. If I turn on and off the volume setting, you can see it has a huge impact on the visual quality of our scene. In the volume setting, I have used my favorite ambient occlusion to generate contact shadows which are clearly visible underneath the car. Next I have added the bloom to add glow in our scene, especially for the headlights of the car. Next in the color grading I have used this ACES color profile which I use in most of the projects. I have slightly increased the contrast and reduced the temperature to get a cooler tone in the colors. Next I have used vignette to darken the corner and chromatic aberration to get a camera lens effect. I will also include some post processing effect in the next part of the video which is camera animation and timeline setup. For the camera animation I have used Cinemachine virtual cameras. You can add Cinemachine package from the package manager. To combine all the shots in one animation sequence, I have used timeline tool. So here are all the cameras I have used. I will show you how to create these cameras from start in the demo part of this video. At bottom, we have this car paint changer objects on which I have attached a material changer script 
So what this script actually does that it loops through all the parts which have same material. In this case, these are the part of main car paint material and it's continuously switching between these different types of car paint material after a particular wait time, which is half second for this material list. Because we are continuously calling this material changing is function. So I'm only activating this game object for a particular camera shots instead of the whole animation sequence. The difference between this car paint changer one and two is just the wait time because for some shots, I want it slowly change the car material and the same thing apply for this rim changer object. If you are feeling a bit confused, then don't worry. You will understand them much better in the demo part of this video. One thing I have also done is that I have override the depth of field effect for certain cameras. If I go to virtual camera seven and here you can see, I have added this override depth of field effect for this particular shot. I wanted more shallow depth of field. How do you add it? Well, first you go to cinema machine and select import post processing version two adapter as a package. And then in your virtual camera extension, you can add a cinema machine post processing component. Then click on new and it will add a completely new post processing profile for this shot, or you can select any existing profile here. And now you can add any kind of effect you want and it will automatically override that particular effect in your main post processing setting. Okay. For example, if you want a different color theme for this shot, then you can add a color grading component from here. And now you can choose any kind of setting you want and it will discard the main color correction and apply these new settings. That's how I use different depth of field setting in different shots. Okay. That's it for the animation. Let's move on to the next feature, which is volumetric lights. It's kind of bonus feature because I didn't use that in the demo. But anyway, let's see this. To make volumetric headlights, I have used two spotlights, same like other spotlights in the scene. But for these, I have enabled the volumetric option. If I enable these lights, you will see nothing happen. Because to see volumetric effect in the scene, you need to go to scene setting and enable this volumetric fog. By default, you will not find this option here. So for that, you need to change the fog type to volumetric fog and add a volumetric fog component from here. So let's reset this so that we can set up the parameters again. Even if it says that for the maximum performance, you should only enable the parameters which you need, but who cares? Set the fog distance to zero. By default, it's pretty high. Then set the global light prop dimmer to zero. Now you can see the fog lights, but our scene is very dark. To fix this, start increasing this base fog distance until the lighting is back to normal. Don't increase this too much. Otherwise your volumetric effect will start fading. I think 40 is okay. But right now our volumetric fog is very splotchy and low quality. So to fix this, select your HDRP asset, which I showed you in the beginning of this video. And here you can turn on this high quality option under the volumetrics. And now our fog is much better, but we still see splotches and jittering. If you look at from a close distance to further fix this, go to the scene setting and add a volumetric lighting controller component, then set the depth extend to zero or minimum and start increasing this value until you see the fog appears in your scene. So this is basically the distance from which you want the fog to be visible. If I zoom out the camera, you can see the fog disappears. In this situation, we need to increase this value a bit more. You only increase it if it is necessary because it highly affect the quality of fog. And now you see our volumetric fog is way much smoother. If you want to increase the intensity of fog, you can do this by increasing the value of your spotlights. Okay. For this demo, I didn't like this effect very much. So I turned this off. Let's move to the final topic, which is how to record the video or image sequence from unity. If you have seen my previous video on how to record HD video from unity, then I would say that you don't need to use this process anymore because this process, which I'm going to show you is way more easy and better than that. So for recording images or video, I'm going to use unity recorder, which you can download from the unity asset store. It's a free package from unity. After importing this package, you can find it under window general recorder and recorder window. As you can see, all the options are pretty much self explanatory. Basically you can choose your output type from here, such as animation clip, movie, image sequence, or even GIF. But for this project, I selected the image sequence in JPG file format. You can choose other file format like EXR. If you want to record 32 bit format images, if you use a linear workflow in your compositing software, 
all the other options are very simple and they don't need any explanation but for this demo i changed the output resolution to 4k you can render up to 8k or higher if you want i keep the aspect ratio to 60 ratio 9 in the recorder mode i choose the frame interval option and set the end frame to the last frame of my animation which you can find in the timeline you can switch between seconds and frame from here and if i click on this forward button it will take the slider to the end frame of the timeline which is 5088 then i set the end frame to 5088 in here and set the playback rate to constant 60 fps and just click on the start recording button i also keep this exit play mode on so that it will automatically stop recording and exit out of play mode when it has reached to the end frame you can obviously record the mp4 video directly from unity but i found that output quality very low compared to the image sequence and i also for some reasons couldn't be able to render video higher than full hd or 1080p resolution and lastly i want to tell you that if you want to render a specific part from the sequence you can do that as well to do that first you switch from frame to seconds by using this little drop down window then from this box you note down the start and end time of the shot for example you want to record the frames between 30 to 40 seconds then in this initial time you set it to 30 so when you play the timeline it will start from 30 seconds and then in this recorder window change the recorder mode to time interval which is in the seconds and here you set the start and end time in seconds which is 30 and 40 in our case after that click on the start recording button and it will record the particular frame range great and finally you can edit the final image sequence in any editing software like adobe premiere after effect vegas etc and make the final video file from there okay so that's how i made the video in unity let's quickly make a small demo using all these features but this time i will be very quick as i have already explained the whole process so if any moment you find it confusing you can jump back to the main topic so let's begin first go to file and make a new scene i save the scene as car tutorial first of all add our background in the scene for that just drag and drop this room mesh into the hierarchy then apply materials on floor and walls which i have already prepared let's add this ring into our scene and place it on the ground set the scale to 10 on x y and z and apply this white light material on it to manage the scene i make a empty game object called background and drag this room and ring object onto it next let's import our car model into the scene here i have two car objects in the project let's add both in our scene so that i can show you what's different between them in the first car model which i use for this demo all the car parts are divided in separate mesh while in the second model i have merged the parts with same material into one object so that i can quickly apply materials on it just to speed up the demo so for this demo part i'm gonna use this second model next to set the camera angle first set the camera in your scene view then select your camera and press ctrl shift f to get the same camera angle in your game view next add hdri environment in our scene for that right click go to rendering and select scene setting then in the visual environment change the sky type to hdri sky and fog type to volume fog then remove or disable the sky and fog parameters and add a new hdri sky component and in the hdri sky slot choose the hdri cube map let's also add reflection probe to bake the reflections for that right click go to light and select reflection probe and make sure to turn off this auto generate button otherwise it will keep baking the lights and reflection for our scene change the reflection probe type to real time to see a quick preview of it then place this probe slightly above the floor set the far clip plane to 50 and switch back to bake reflection type then change the probe shape to spare and increase the radius how far you want to capture the reflections before baking the light map make sure the environment is set to light map and reflection probe static you can also use far clip plane distance if it takes longer to bake and finally click on bake button to bake the reflection probes now the reflections are baked let's quickly assign material to our car model because i have already showed you all the materials so i'm gonna speed up this part of this video
All right, we have applied material to all the parts of the car. Let's add some lights in it. First, disable this default direction light and create a new spot light. Set the intensity to 500 and range to 50 and also turn on the reflector option. One quick tip for placing light that you can also use Ctrl Shift F to place your light at the viewing angle of your scene view. Next, adjust the outer and inner angle of light to get a soft fall off effect and make sure to disable the effect specular and range attenuation option. Next, turn on shadows and set the resolution to 2048 and disable the volumetrics for this light. Then click on this plus button to see the advanced option and keep the light layer to default light layer. Then press Ctrl D to duplicate the light and use Ctrl Shift F to place the light from every direction onto this car. Alright, now our basic light setup is done. Of course you can change the intensity and position of light anytime you want. Right now you can see that there are some weird shadows on the ground because the floor is receiving shadows from all the lights, which in this case we don't want. So to fix that, select the floor object and in the rendering layer mask, remove the default light layer and assign it in the light layer 1. Now there are no shadow on the floor, but the floor has become dark. So let's make a point light and place it above the car and set the intensity to 300 and range to 50. And to lit the floor in the light layer option, include the light layer 1. Now our floor is receiving light from this point light. Next enable the shadow map and disable the volumetrics and also disable the effect specular and range attenuation for this light also. Next, I adjust the position of point light to get a natural looking shadow on the ground. Once you satisfied with the lighting, press Ctrl Shift N to make an empty game object and drag all the lights onto this object to keep the things organized. Finally, go to the lighting panel and turn on only the real time GI and keep the parameters at default value and click on the generate lighting button to bake real time light maps for our scene. Once it's done, you can see that we are getting nice bounce light underneath the car. Now with our basic lighting is done, let's add some post effect to further improve our lighting. I will also speed up this part because I have already explained this. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comment section. Alright, now our car is looking very nice. Let's add camera animation. Before that, let's first set up our timeline. Make an empty game object and name it timeline or whatever you want. Select this object and go to timeline and click on this create button and it will ask you to save your timeline asset. I call it cutscene demo and hit save. Delete this animated component from the timeline and the inspector panel because we don't need it. I suggest you to keep this timeline window logged so that you can easily access it without selecting the timeline object from the hierarchy. Next go to our main camera and add a Cinemachine brain component. This is basically our main Cinemachine controller. To make our first animated camera, go to Cinemachine and create a virtual camera. Again I am using Ctrl Shift F to place the virtual camera in our scene. This virtual camera is same like normal camera where you can set various parameters like field of view, near and far clip plane and etc. Set the field of view to 25 to compress the perspective and adjust the rotation and position to get a nice initial view for our animation. Once it's done, select the virtual camera and drag and drop into the timeline and choose the animation track because we only want animation information from our camera. Next click on this red dot icon to start recording the animation. Then again go to scene view and slightly move your camera and it will automatically add a keyframe at 0 frame. Next move our slider to how long you want this animation and simply move the camera to that last position. And now you can see that on the timeline our animation is recorded. Click on this red button again to stop the recording. And now if you want to make any changes in the animation, just double click on this animation bar and it will open the animation window with keys on it. I hope you are familiar with the animation editor. Here you can easily change the time duration by moving these keys. Also use the curves to change the interpolation to linear, smooth or whatever you want. Just simply close the animation window and all the changes will automatically apply to the timeline. Next, as I told you earlier, you can also add post effect on per camera basis. 
For instance, I want to get a shallow depth of field in this shot to mainly focus the light and the logo of this car. To do that, go to virtual camera and in the extension, add a Cinemachine post-processing component. And make sure that you have imported this post-processing version to adapter in order to get this extension. Next, add the post-processing extension and create a new profile and in the override parameter, I choose the depth of field option. Here adjust the focus distance until the front part is more focused and the back part is blurred. You can also decrease the aperture and select this very large blur size to more emphasize the depth of field effect. Feel free to tweak the parameter to get your desired result. Now you can see that we have a nicely focused front shot of the car. Next use the same previous process to create a front dolly shot. Please make sure that you start the next animation where the first animation is finished. After adding the keys for the first and last frame. You see that our camera is just moving from one position to another without focusing anything. Let's say we want to focus on the car logo during the animation. So to do that, select the logo and copy its name. Then go to virtual camera option and in the look at section, paste the object in the search bar and select this logo object. Now you can see that the logo is always in the center of the camera. Also our animation is looking much better. You can further modify the first and last position of camera until you get the desired shot. And in this animation section, you can also fine tune your focus target. Once both animation are done, you can see that by moving the slider, I can only see the preview of second virtual camera. So to merge all the animation in one sequence, drag and drop the main camera into the timeline and this time choose add cinemachine track. Move this camera on top of all animations. Next right click on the cinemachine track and select add from cinemachine virtual camera base and select your first camera and it will add an animation clip of the first virtual camera. Repeat the same process to add the second animation clip and now we can see animation of both cameras. You can also blend them to get a nice camera transition. Feel free to experiment with it. Now our animation is ready. However, there is a little jerk in between the animations. But don't worry, we can cut that part in the editing software. Let me also show you how I change the material during the runtime. For that, first make an empty game object called controller and assign the material changer script to it. In the all material list, set the size to 4 and choose any of 4 material from the library. In the all parts, set the size to 1 because for this model, I have merged all the parts of same material into single object. In the element, choose the car body which has the main car material. Next in the default material, choose our current car material and set the wait time to 0.5 which means it will change the car material after every half second. Okay. Now if I play the animation, you see that it starts changing material from the beginning, but we want to apply this effect only in the second shot. To do that, drag and drop this controller on the timeline and choose add activation track. And now it has made an activation clip. So our controller script will only be activated during this activation track. Now you can see our controller object is disabled in the beginning. And when I move the slider on the activation track, the controller object is enabled again. Now if I play the game, it perfectly changing the material during the runtime. Okay. In the last, let's see how we can record this animation in 4K resolution. First in the timeline, change the unit to frame if it is in seconds. Then go to last frame and note down the last frame number, which is 526. Then open up the unity recorder window. Here change the recorder mode to frame interval and set the first and last frame number. The frame rate is constant 60 FPS and let's delete the existing recorder and make a new one. Click on this add new recorder button and here you can choose movie. But for the best quality, I choose image sequence. I keep the format JPEG and output resolution. I choose full HD. You can go higher if you want. Aspect ratio is 60 ratio 9. Rest of the setting are fine. Just click on the start recording button and it will start recording the game window. Once it's complete, click on this arrow button and it will open the recording folder. Here you can see all the frames of our animation which you can import in your editing software and make the final video file. So this is the complete process of my car rendering demo. If you have any queries regarding any part of this video, feel free to ask me on comment section or on my discord server. And finally I want to announce that we have got our first Patreon support. I would like to thank Dimidu, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, for his great support. Actually, to be honest, I wasn't expecting any Patreon so soon because right now my channel is very small and I don't have much subscribers. But I really very thankful to all the guys who subscribe my channel and really care about my work. 
I will definitely try my best to provide you much more useful and advanced information about game development. And if you are still watching this video, thank you so much for watching till the end. See you in the next video. Bye bye.